Welcome everybody to this uh, keynote webinar. Uh, I am Anna Ramella and I'm a member of the WPHI Young Scientists Committee who organized this uh, webinar series. I'm a PhD student at Politecnico di Milano. The, we are waiting again two minutes uh, to let everybody join uh, this webinar. I'll start giving you some uh, instructions. Uh, the webinar will be organized uh, into two sessions. Uh, a first session, which will be devoted to the uh, presentation, which will last 45 to 50 minutes. And uh, it, it is followed by a Q&A session, which will last uh, 10 to 15 minutes. If you have questions, you can ask uh, uh, them during the Q&A sessions, and you can type uh, uh, your, all your questions in the chat box. In the chat box and uh, you are muted so you cannot uh, uh, speak during the, the webinar so again for questions type them uh, uh, into the chat box okay we are ready to start so good afternoon everybody again and welcome to this WPHI keynote webinar for today's webinar we have invited a speaker Giulia Loraghi who will share with us a research on personalized computer modeling for cardiovascular and neurovascular intervention Giulia is currently assistant professor at Politecnico di Milano since 2022, and she's uh, the leader of the cardiovascular division of the Computational Biomechanics Laboratory. She's also affiliated research fellow at the Department of Biomechanical Engineering at the Delft University of Technology in the Netherlands, and she's a member of the WPHI Society since 2020. So, uh, in I think we are ready to start, so let's, let me thank Giulia for joining us, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, the floor is yours. Thank you, Anna, for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my talk of uh, this afternoon um, is, uh, is on uh, personalized in silico models. Uh, I will go through uh, three different applications, uh, starting from uh, heart valve disease uh, and then aorta disease uh, and finally acute ischemic stroke uh, disease, uh, so from proximal to distal uh, diseases. Uh, the first one, uh, the, the, the application is the transcatheter aortic valve implantation, named the TAVI. Uh, it consists uh, um, in uh, in the insertion of um, a, a transcatheter aortic valve uh, with a minimal invasive procedure uh, through normally uh, the femoral arteries or um, the subclavian or uh, directly from the atrium. Uh, in this case, uh, you can see the procedure starting from the femoral artery uh, with a cathetering uh, the crimped valve is uh, placed uh, at the annulus uh, where the um, pathology is. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, the pathology is uh, the stenosis of the aortic valve. Uh, then the um, prosthesis is deployed, as you can see from the video, and uh, the uh, functionality of uh, the disease valve is replaced by uh, the prosthesis. So this is the uh, clinical procedure. Uh, this is a very common procedure for uh, high or uh, middle risk of patients, uh, but uh, um, there are some um, um, complications, uh, for example, uh, structural complications as uh, malaposition, uh, atrioventricular block, uh, or uh, coronary occlusions, uh, vascular damage, and uh, leaflet uh, deformation. But also uh, there are uh, um, complications related to the hemodynamics, uh, for example, leaks, uh, hemolysis, uh, lethal thrombosis, uh, or uh, stagnation of flow. So uh, this is why um, we uh, try to model exactly the complete procedure uh, to, repl to replicate the patient specific, specific case um, in order to study and to improve uh, uh, this technique. So um, uh, with this technique, uh, I will go through um, the pre-implantation scenario and the post-implantation scenario. So 
So to uh, build a patient-specific model, uh, we need to start from patient-specific images. In this case, uh, we uh, segmented uh, the, the, the aorta from uh, CT uh, with contrast uh, images. So uh, we um, extrapolate the uh, internal lumen of the aorta, and then we, um, with an extrusion function, we build uh, uh, the uh, structural model of the aorta. Uh, since we need to, um, to run a finite element simulation, we need to discretize the geometry. So um, we choose uh, to discretize the aorta, the thickness of the aorta with the extrahedral elements. And uh, you can see here uh, with three elements through the thickness to um, well capture the, the bending and the, uh, the, the deformation of the aorta. Regarding the uh, native leaflets, uh, we can reconstruct them directly from a uh, uh, segmentation process. Uh, this is because uh, the resolution of the CT images. So um, follow the um, procedure we found in the literature. Uh, we uh, manually reconstruct uh, the three leaflets of the native valve of the patients uh, by drawing some uh, uh, line, as you can see, uh, to um, identify the, the commissure zone of the patients in the aorta. And then uh, uh, we build the surface and we discretize the surface um, with the quadrilateral element, shell elements. Uh, regarding the pathology, so uh, the stenotic valve um, presented some calcification on the leaflets themselves. And so the calcification are visible uh, with the CT images. And so we uh, segmented again the, the calcification uh, to, to have a, a solid element um, joined to the leaflets of the patient. Uh, this table uh, is uh, how we model the different materials. Uh, we use hyperelastic materials uh, for both aorta and the native leaflets. A linear elastic material for classification. You can see the reference here. Um, so we did this procedure to build a uh, different uh, patient specific uh, um, models uh, with different, you can see morphologies, uh, different pattern of classifications. And since we need to run uh, free structure interaction models, we need the, um, some uh, pressures uh, uh, use as a boundary condition on the fluid domains. So uh, we have uh, the pressure-specific uh, pressure curves, and then uh, uh, we extrapolate uh, the pressures that we need to apply as a boundary condition in the model. And you can see here uh, the final results of the HFSI simulation. So we have a, a strong coupling between the fluid domain uh, model blood and uh, the aorta and native leaflet and calcification. All these three parts are deformable parts uh, with uh, a two-way fully coupled uh, with the fluid domain. Uh, we, uh, as a result, uh, we can have and evaluate um, stress field, uh, strain field, displacement field, on uh, the aorta, on the leaflets, on the classification, uh, but we can have also um, uh, flow results. Um, we uh, apply the pressure boundary conditions so we can measure the flow rate as a result, and we compare the, the flow rate and the velocity in a section uh, with the echo Doppler of the patient. So uh, we did uh, this um, procedure for all the patients that we modeled uh, with a very good um, match between uh, the results from the FSI simulation and the echo Doppler from the patient. Uh, then we want to model the procedure. So now that we have uh, the pathological condition of the patient, uh, we um, draw uh, the, the valves. So starting from a uh, um, cylindrical shape of the stent, and then uh, with a deformed function, we obtain the final configuration 
of uh, um, the valve model. Uh, we compare the valve model uh, with um, uh, measurements from the real uh, valve and we discretize the, um, the stent with um, extrahedral elements. Actually, um, recently we compare extrahedral element discretization with beam element discretization, uh, but now I will show you the results uh, uh, with the extrahedral discretization. Uh, as the material, um, the material of the um, stand here is uh, with a shape memory alloy. So we model this uh, super elastic uh, condition. And as for the pericardium, uh, we have uh, the skirt and the leaflet. Um, since uh, they work with different loading, we uh, choose uh, a membrane uh, triangular elements for the skirt and a shell quadriangular elements for the leaflets. Here, reference for uh, the materials. Um, about the simulation of the TAVI. So uh, start, we start uh, by uh, crimping the device and then we place the crimp device in the patient specific domain. In this case, uh, in this aorta that you can see, and the procedure, the, the, the simulation reflect exactly the procedure. So uh, the, the 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 deployment of the device uh, is by unsheathing a catheter, and we obtain a good match between uh, uh, simulation and uh, clinical data. And this is the, the FSI complete simulation of the post-AVI scenario of the patient. In this case, uh, we uh, apply as boundary condition pressures acquired after the treatment. And we have in this case a very complex uh, structural problems because we have uh, uh, the uh, patient domain, the aorta, the native leaflets and the calcification. Uh, full in contact with the, the device composed by the stent and the pericardium. Uh, all of these structural parts are deformable and uh, coupled with the uh, blood domain. Uh, we select uh, um, um, two patients, patient A and B, uh, which uh, underwent exactly the same procedure with the same uh, device. But uh, as outcomes, uh, uh, patient A uh, present uh, um, mild uh, paravalvular leakage, uh, while patient B, a moderate uh, paravalvular leakage. And you can see, yes, uh, during the diastole, paravalvular leakage is a, is a hemodynamic problem uh, that occurred during the diastole. So um, when the valve should be uh, completely closed, uh, actually, there is some um, regurgitation of the blood flow. And you can see uh, from the red circles that uh, in the diastole um, of uh, patient A, uh, there are some leakage in two different zones, uh, but it's less uh, than uh, patient B, which presents a very uh, bigger area of uh, paravalvular leakage. And this is a pro of using FSI simulations to model uh, uh, the TAVI procedure. Uh, so we can exactly evaluate and quantify uh, these uh, hemodynamic problems uh, of, the, of the procedure. Um, then we design a new study. Uh, so we want to study uh, the impact of uh, uh, different uh, calcification patterns on uh, the performance of the TAVI and on uh, the, the performance also uh, in, uh, in with a, from a hemodynamic uh, point of view. So uh, we design a, a cooptation partner and a radial partner, and also we change the number of calcification. This uh, is, uh, uh, of course, an idealized uh, model uh, with a um, patient specific um, aorta. And uh, we um, built a different six different models, uh, try changing uh, the, the patterns and the numbers of calcification. Um, we obtain interesting results. 
um, we of course can compare, uh, for example, the stress on this on this sensor, um, also the opening area, uh, the stress on the pericardium valve, which is a very important to to measure the damage of the uh, pericardium valve and, uh, and to measure the, the performance of the device. Um, uh, we, we, we did run uh, FSI simulations, so we can uh, compare also hemodynamics uh, uh, results. Uh, we obtain interesting results uh, because uh, uh, we can observe uh, that uh, uh, with um, uh, the, the first partner of calcification, we obtain uh, uh, um, mild uh, paravalvular leakage, while uh, in the radial configuration uh, of uh, the calcifications, you obtain moderate. Uh, and so this is a very nice result that can help clinicians uh, uh, to evaluate and to choose the best um, devices uh, uh, according to the different patient-specific uh, calcifications observed in the patients. So um, this is the first application. Uh, in conclusion, uh, we um, developed uh, a complete patient-specific uh, model uh, of the uh, stenotic aortic uh, valves. Uh, we build uh, a strong FSI simulation uh, to uh, be able to reproduce the pathological hemodynamic condition. And then we built uh, um, uh, structural deployment, uh, implementation of, this, of the uh, aortic valve. And then uh, um, with an FSI, we can reproduce uh, uh, the post-TAVI procedure uh, and uh, evaluate uh, the complications after TAVI from both the structural and the hemodynamic uh, point of view. And finally, uh, with the calcification uh, pattern analysis, uh, uh, the, our hypothesis that uh, the calcification pattern strongly affect uh, the outcome of the simulation uh, is confirmed. So um, we can move to the second application, uh, which in a sense is quite similar to the first one. Um, it's the thoracic endovascular aortic repair. Um, a quick video to show uh, the procedure. So it's a minimally uh, invasive procedure again, uh, which consists in the insertion of a stent graft in the aorta. This is in case of uh, aneurysm or dissection of the aorta. And the procedure um, aims it to uh, isolate uh, the pathological um, area of the aorta to restore the physiological hemodynamic condition. Uh, in this video, there is a very big aneurysm in this aorta, and you can see that the, the flow, uh, the, the, the blood flow is restored in a physiological lumen uh, with the, the insertion of the stent graft. Um, as uh, for the TAVI, also here with TIVAR, it's uh, a common procedure in the clinical practice, uh, but uh, there are still uh, uh, complications, especially in the longer term. For example, endolic, uh, so uh, that uh, there is still blood flow in the pathological region after the procedure. Uh, Burbic, which is uh, uh, a malaposition of the device uh, due to the curvature and the morphology of the aorta, and uh, uh, migration. So uh, the displacement uh, of the device uh, during the, the, the long-term um, follow-up. Uh, so the stand graft, uh, you can see uh, in the bottom panel, is composed by uh, uh, some rings uh, made of uh, uh, made of nitinol and a graft. So uh, we um, discretize in this case the uh, stent with beam elements and the graft with the membrane uh, triangular elements. And um, we connect the stent and the graft with a node-to-node connection uh, by measure the uh, distance uh, of the sutures 
so we try to replicate exactly uh, the distance uh, with the mesh, with a, uh, a mesh node to node connection. Uh, interesting is um, that we observe uh, that the, the diameter of the free uh, struts uh, are bigger with respect to the diameter of uh, the sutured, so the nominal diameter of the device. So this means that uh, uh, the, the struts uh, have a pre-stress uh, on the final device. And so uh, we um, analyzed uh, the, the, the diameters and uh, we uh, use a finite element simulation to replicate uh, and to have uh, this uh, important pre-stress uh, on the, the struts. This is a very important uh, because of this uh, uh, impact on uh, the, the final ra radial force uh, and the pressure that uh, the, 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 stand, the device uh, has on the domain, uh, for example, on the aorta. Um, Uh, in this uh, application, I want uh, to show uh, the, the validation process that we built uh, to run uh, uh, the final TVAR simulation. Uh, we start uh, in validating the, the, the materials. So uh, we perform anti-axial -ax, tensile test on the graft and uh, um, uh, crimping test. Uh, first uh, on uh, uh, the, the single stent ring and uh, we uh, in this, um, in this um, way we tune and we calibrate uh, the, uh, the, the, the variables of the nitinol uh, shape memory alloy parameters and then we uh, perform the uh, crimping test on the full device and uh, again, we um, calibrate and we ver verify the, our choice, our uh, variables to, to model the materials with a very good match, uh, especially in the working range uh, of the device. Uh, these uh, are the final uh, variables uh, after the tuning uh, process. Uh, once we have the device model validate, uh, we move to validate the procedure itself. So uh, we decide to uh, 3D print uh, um, two different uh, uh, models of Aorta. The first one is uh, with an idealized morphology, and the second one is uh, with a patient specific morphology. Both uh, are uh, with a rigid. Uh, uh, 3D printed material in order not to add uh, uncertainty in, in our uh, validation study. Uh, after the implantation, we acquired uh, with a CT scan uh, images so we can segment them to have uh, um, a model that we um, a segmented uh, deployed the configuration of the device. Uh, to, to compare our simulation. So um, we uh, run uh, the simulations with uh, um, the explicit uh, commercial explicit solver LSDyna uh, from ANSYS uh, package. Uh, we use an explicit solver uh, with um, a fixed time step with mass scaling technique. Uh, as a boundary condition, we uh, exactly replicate um, uh, the, the real procedures, uh, the real uh, uh, test. So the aorta was modeled with a rigid material, uh, penalty contacts uh, between the device and the aorta, and the displacement boundary condition to crimp and to place the, the device exactly in the same location uh, of the procedure. So uh, you can uh, see here uh, some uh, snapshot from the simulation. So first step is uh, the crimping step and then the tracking and finally the gradual deployment. Uh, you can see uh, the videos of uh, the simulation in the idealized and in the pressure specific read the aorta. Um, we, since we have the segmented configuration of the device during 
their uh, deployment, uh, we can compare uh, the segmented one and the, the uh, simulation, simul um, the, 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 the configuration from the simulation. Uh, so we can measure the, the error. Um, so we can do for each struct the, the error in terms of uh, opening area. Uh, for uh, the idealized aorta, we have a very good results uh, with errors below uh, 3%. Um, while for the patient specific aorta, we obtain uh, error less than 5%. So with a very, very, it's a very, very good result in our opinion. So uh, now that, that we have the, also the TVAR simulation validate, uh, we can move to patient specific application. So we collect uh, with the Policlinico of Milano Hospital, um, a database of patients uh, under went um, TVAR procedure. Uh, we divide them into aneurysm pathology and dissection pathology. Uh, you can see here two examples of uh, CT images and uh, the final results from the segmentation process. Um, we model, in this case, the aorta with the hyperelastic material. And um, so this is an example of a patient-specific uh, um, TVAR simulation. Uh, we have, of course, uh, all the results uh, from the structural solver. So for example, stress, strain on the device and on the aorta. Uh, we can also measure the distance between uh, the span and uh, the aorta. And finally, uh, we built uh, an FSI simulation again to evaluate the performance of the stand graft in a dynamic uh, uh, environment. Um, so um, you can see some uh, details of the mesh here. So in this case, uh, we use an inverse boundary technique uh, to track uh, the uh, FSI kinematic uh, uh, mesh movement. Uh, so the, the, the structures are fully immersed in the fluid domain. Um, as a boundary condition, um, we apply um, physiological uh, flow rate here and the Winkessel uh, uh, outlet uh, boundary conditions uh, at the outlets. Uh, this is our proof of concept FSI simulation. So um, we use a physiological profile and also value from literature. Um, of course, uh, we would need a patient specific uh, uh, value to tune the Vincastel and also to use as a boundary condition at the inlet to run exactly patient specific simulation. Um, but this is a very challenging FSI simulation. So it's uh, the first one and it's a proof of concept. So in, in future, we hope to have also patient specific data. Um, so uh, videos are the FSI simulations um, and we can quantify uh, flow rate and the pressure uh, from all the inlets and outlets. And very important is that with FSI, we can evaluate uh, um, complications after TVAR. Uh, we can evaluate, uh, uh, for example, uh, in, with different sections, uh, if uh, the uh, pathology is uh, really ex uh, exclude from uh, uh, blood flow as uh, the TVAR aims. Uh, and also we can evaluate the, the, the contact, uh, the ceiling, the distance uh, in the dynamic uh, environment of the pustatile aorta. To conclude uh, this uh, second application, um, the, the commercial stand graph model is uh, created and validated. And uh, also we carry uh, out uh, um, in vitro tests uh, to uh, validate the TVAR procedure. And then uh, we can move to run patient specific cases uh, and uh, to reproduce the post TVAR hemodynamic conditions with the FSI, um, FSI simulations. 
So uh, final um, application that I want to show you today is um, uh, the uh, thrombectomy, mechanical thrombectomy procedure to treat the acute ischemic stroke. Uh, acute ischemic stroke occurs uh, when a, a thrombus, a blood clot, uh, prevent blood flow uh, in a cerebral artery. Uh, the thrombectomy procedure uh, is done with a stent retriever, uh, which um, is inserted with a minimally invasive technique to capture the thrombus and uh, to remove the, 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 the thrombus. So first, again, we start with the validation process. So uh, we built uh, for the first time uh, in the literature because it's a, very, it's a quite um, a new uh, application, uh, a high fidelity model uh, with a finite element um, method uh, to model the thrombectomy procedure. And we validate this, this simulation with experiments. And then uh, we move to a patient specific application. Uh, so um, the tests are performed uh, at Serenovus in Galway. Uh, you can see that this is a 3D printed uh, silicon um, cerebral arteries. Uh, there are different. Uh, Yet, um, the, the 3D printed domain uh, is composed by the internal carotid artery, the, um, uh, um, the, the middle cerebral arteries, and the anterior cerebral artery. Uh, the, uh, the devices uh, per, uh, tested uh, were uh, the Imbotrap, uh, Tribo, and Solitaire, so three different commercial stent retriever, and also the clock. Um, we test uh, two different types of clot, the red thrombus uh, composed by uh, red blood cells uh, um, and 40% and white uh, thrombus, uh, so only fibrin and platelets and no red blood cells. And this is why different uh, thrombus composition reflects different uh, um, mechanical performance. Uh, in this video, you can see an example of the uh, in vitro test with a red uh, blood cells rich clot. Uh, we performed these six experiments uh, the, with the three with three different devices, as you can see before, and with two different uh, uh, thrombus type, so red and white for all uh, the three investigated devices. Um, so, as for the simulation, so we have the uh, vessel domain discretized with the quadrilateral rigid elements. This is a, an assumption, of course, uh, of the material, uh, but uh, the 3D printed uh, material uh, um, to, 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 to print the, the aorta. Uh, was test and was uh, quite rigid, so we assume uh, a rigid elements in the simulation. And the catheter to uh, place the, the, the stent retriever. The clots. Uh, clots are uh, discretized with the tetrahedral element and uh, we perform some uh, unconfined compression tests and the tensile test uh, to uh, mechanical evaluate the um, thrombus uh, material. And uh, you can see very um, different material, uh, different um, behavior for the different uh, clot composition. Uh, as for the sensor retriever, we uh, reconstruct the geometry and then we uh, discretize the geometry with beam elements and uh, to calibrate the material uh, to model the nitinol uh, we perform a, a tensile test as you can see from the video 
Um, the simulation uh, is composed by different steps. The first step is the stamp printing in a catheter, and then the tracking, so to place uh, the crimped stent at the thrombus location, the deployment uh, at the clot location, and finally, the retrieval phase, so to remove both the stent and the clot. You can see from the video, the retrieval phase. Uh, just to give, to give you an idea, uh, the, the simulation were run with uh, um, LSDINA ANSYS and it on 28 CPUs with 250 uh, RAM, uh, the simulation lasts a uh, bit to two days, let's say. Um, we perform uh, exactly the same uh, uh, simulation, so to run uh, the six uh, test, uh, thrombectomy test, uh, the, the, the success or fail that you can see in the table are uh, uh, if the uh, thrombus uh, was removed or not. So it's the final outcome of the simulation. Um, we can, uh, I can show you these two results because uh, for, with the red clots we have successful uh, outcome and with the white clot um, a negative outcome. Uh, this is with the red thrombus and we can, um, and in this case we have a, a, a positive outcome since the, the clot is uh, completely removed. And in this case, with the white clot, we have a negative outcome. Um, we also have, for one case, this case, uh, two different outcomes in the in vitro and in silico test. Um, but uh, we observe that um, the kinematic during the retrieval of the clot is quite uh, the same. So the clot uh, uh, try uh, to escape from the stent, but at the end, uh, in, in the in vitro test, uh, the, the, the clot escaped totally from the stent, and while in the in silico uh, reach the, the aspiration catheter. But we are quite um, uh, satisfied with this result because the, all the kinematic of the retrieval was captured well by the simulation. Uh, so in conclusion of this part, we have validated the, um, the mechanical thrombectomy simulation with two different types of clot and three different devices. Um, the limitations uh, were that uh, we use a rigid vessel wall, uh, but this is a, um, it's a limitation, especially when we move to special specific application. Here to model the in vitro test, uh, we believe that uh, the, the, um, this assumption is uh, not so important. Uh, and we think that uh, this uh, do not change the results of the simulation itself. And um, uh, in, in, in the simulation that I show you, there are no clot fragmentation model. Uh, but in other case, uh, in other tests, uh, we observe uh, some fragmentation of the clots. Uh, and so um, we then implement a fragmentation model in the clot. Uh, so you can see from this video that we, we can also model uh, the, the, uh, the fragmentation during the retrieval phase, uh, which uh, happen not always, but especially in, with the red blood cells clot. Uh, then we can move to the patient-specific application of the thrombectomy procedure. Uh, I will show you uh, a patient. So um, again, we reconstruct the patient-specific domain from uh, CT with contrast um, to obtain the uh, final uh, uh, vascular model. We select uh, a patient uh, with a thrombus in uh, uh, the middle cerebral arteries on the right side, with a specific length estimated from the CT. 
and uh, uh, with a, a specific composition that we know because we um, the compression test that was performed on the ex vivo cloth. Um, so uh, we um, also in collaboration with the Erasmus Hospital in the Netherlands, uh, different uh, cloth ex vivo uh, were tested with compression test. And so we can uh, extrapolate the uh, stress strain behavior of uh, the clot uh, by interpolate with the specific uh, composition that we need. Um, these patients underwent two different attempts uh, of thrombectomy with the uh, same stent retriever. Uh, there was no evidence of clot fragmentation and uh, uh, also the, the occlusion location uh, in the two attempts uh, was uh, the same. Uh, the difference between the two attempts was that uh, the first one, in the first one, the stand was placed uh, too uh, distal with respect to the cloth, while in the second attempt was uh, placed uh, in a correct uh, way. Uh, it, it's not uh, it's impossible to see from uh, this uh, CT uh, because you need to combine information from the angiography. So you can see the clot location uh, where the contrast stops and this information of the stent location. So uh, with the help, of course, of neurologists, we can uh, we reconstruct the story of these patients. And so why the, we, the, the patients require two attempts? Because in the first one, uh, the uh, stand positioning was uh, uh, not optimal. Um, so uh, we uh, run uh, and we perform the, the simulation to replicate the, the, the two attempts. In the first one, we place uh, the stand uh, um, in, in a two distal position, and in the second simulation, we place the stent in the correct position. Uh, so this is the simulation uh, of the first attempt. Uh, you can see that we delete the branches that we don't need in the simulation. Um, the cloud tried to escape, uh, but it was missed uh, here uh, in the internal cerebral artery. And then from the angel, we can see that the, the clot we go exactly on the same location uh, uh, or the, the same original location. Um, we, we think because the blood flow was restored uh, between the two attempts, because uh, during this uh, thrombectomy, there was a balloon that uh, uh, prevent the blood flow to, to go through the clot. And uh, this is the result of the second attempt with a positive outcome. Uh, so to conclude, uh, also this final application, uh, we um, built a, a high fidelity finite element simulation to correctly reproduce the outcome of uh, a patient specific thrombectomy procedure. Uh, we also uh, show uh, how uh, it's important to, to correctly uh, model the stand position and the impact of the stand position uh, on uh, the, the, the outcome of the, of the procedure itself. Um, as a limitation, uh, we don't have clinical data on the procedure kinematics. So uh, we only have data about the final outcome of the patient. And also we have some uncertainties uh, on patient-specific parameters like our arterial wall parameter, friction between a cloth and vessel, friction between cloth and stand. And so uh, in future, we can run uh, uncertainty quantifications uh, to uh, study the impact of these uh, um, parameters uh, on the outcome of the simulation. Uh, so last, slide. Um, so uh, these three applications are towards in silico medicine, uh, which use computer models and simulations in different aspects of the medicine. And I hope uh, uh, that this talk of today um, uh, show uh, three different applications uh, uh, in this context uh, of use. So the in silico medicine uh, to help in prevention, diagnosis, uh, 
follow up, uh, uh, prognosis assessment, and uh, treat the treatment disease. Uh, finally, uh, I would like to thank all my group in Milano, uh, Professor Francesco Milavacca, Professor uh, Jose Felix Rodriguez Matas, uh, Sara Bridio, and Anna Ramella. Yeah. And thank you all for your attention. Thank you, Giulia, for uh, your interesting talk. I think we can move to the question Q&A session. Uh, as I said before, but I repeat for those who join the webinar later, uh, if you have questions, you can type them in the chat box to the organizer and expert uh, people. And uh, OK, so if you have questions, type them there. In the meanwhile, uh, I can start uh, with a question to Giulia. Um, I would like to ask you how far we are uh, uh, to use those uh, uh, simulations uh, in the clinical practice. Uh, in the, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, um, it, it's a good question. Um, I think that we have uh, two different scenarios because uh, uh, for the TAVI and TIVAR, uh, which are a uh, planning procedure, uh, we can use uh, uh, directly uh, the result from high fidelity simulations uh, to help in the pre-planning uh, uh, practice. Uh, because we have time to reconstruct, uh, to run the simulation. Um, so actually, uh, we collaborate with two different hospitals in, in Milano. Um, so we received the uh, CT images from uh, the hospital. Uh, we use uh, our uh, tool, our sim high fidelity simulation tool uh, to uh, perform and to model different uh, implantation scenario. And this could help uh, clinicians uh, in choosing the optimum device, uh, the best uh, procedures. Uh, um, different is uh, for the thrombectomy application uh, because uh, uh, the, there is no time uh, to run high fidelity simulations uh, because, um, of course, uh, uh, clinician need to, to uh, do the thrombolysis or thrombectomy uh, as far as the patients came at the hospital. Uh, so in this case, uh, um, our uh, feelings is that we need uh, to build uh, some uh, fast model or surrogate models uh, to, to estimate uh, the, the outcome of the procedure. And this could help, of course, in the, again, pre-planning tool. Uh, we can use uh, simulations also. Uh, to uh, study the performance of the device. So this could help also the companies uh, uh, to um, improve or to compare uh, the, the performance of different devices. Um, so, uh, or um, uh, as um, in the um, study that I show for the TAVI, so we can design uh, and uh, produce a virtual patients uh, with uh, particular morphologies, particular um, features, and uh, perform the, the procedure uh, on those patients and uh, evaluate in this case uh, uh, something that uh, in, in, in the clinical practice or with the real clinical trials uh, would be impossible to do. Okay, thank you very much for okay. your. <laughs> reply. We have a question, a question from the audience. Um, thank you uh, for the lively talk. How much does one patient specific simulation take? Uh, it depends um, on TAVI or TIVAR, uh, the structural simulation uh, of the deployments. Um, it takes uh, hours. Uh, uh, four, five, six hours uh, on uh, 26 CPUs, uh, so with a high number of CPUs and uh, high memo RAM memory. Um, while uh, the FSI simulations are uh, much more expensive, so uh, 
roughly to, to run two cardiac cycles. Uh, it takes uh, two weeks, uh, roughly. And for the thrombectomy simulation, um, the, the, the uh, computational time is two days uh, to, to run all the steps of the thrombectomy procedures. And this is only the computational time to run the simulation. Uh, the segmentation process and discretization process require times also. Thank you again. We still have another one. Uh, they are asking, how can you tell, uh, can you tell when the model is an high fidelity model? If you uh, know. When it's yeah. valid data. Uh, Follow we uh, the VMV40. Uh, there are some um, verification, validation, and uncertainty quantification analysis uh, to to run and to uh, build the credibility of the model. And then you can say that the, your model is a high fidelity model. So um, I didn't show for the TAVI because I want to show the pre and post TAVI scenario, but uh, for all the simulation that we need, that we run, we perform a verification analysis by changing the topology, typology of the elements, uh, uh, parameters uh, related to the technical um, details of the simulation, and sensitivity analysis on the mesh size, on the parameters, and then we perform validation analysis with uh, comparison, qu quantify, uh, quantify comparison with in vitro test. And, and, and so we, we, we built uh, some uh, validation evidence to, to build the, the credibility and the applicability of, of the models. Okay, thank you again. Let, no, let's wait like uh, one minute if there are uh, some mm -hmm. other questions. In the meanwhile, uh, I would like to thank you again uh, uh, for joining us for delivering this uh, really interesting webinar. Thank um, you for inviting me. And yeah, we have another one. <laughs> the last one, the last questions, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, Luca is asking if you can go deeply about the reconstruction of the leaflets in the TAVI as they are not segmented from the ACT. Uh, yes. Let me see if I can go back quickly on the slides. Uh, but yeah, so um, since uh, the resolution of the CT images that we have uh, for the TAVI patients was not the not so good to reconstruct the leaflet and also because on the leaflet there are uh, calcifications uh, um, we prefer to follow a method that we found in the literature so to uh, manually draw uh, the profile uh, of uh, the leaflets uh, uh, from uh, uh, the, um, the sinus of the aorta. And then uh, we should, yeah, sorry. Uh, yes, so uh, we manually draw uh, the, these lines uh, that you can see on the sinus of the aorta. And then um, we um, draw a circle here and uh, three different uh, uh, surface. Uh, then we discretize the surface and we apply a pressure uh, uh, on this on all the three uh, surface to obtain the anti-solid configuration. Um, so um, we uh, now have a different protocol uh, to uh, for, for for the patients uh, uh, for TAVI under one TAVI. And so now we can reconstruct from uh, the CT images. And so, and so we, we, we can, in this case, uh, reconstruct the leaflets from the images and also uh, reconstruct the leaflets with this method and have a, a match or uh, compare the, the, the configurations. But uh, uh, so I performed this study um, so 
uh, years ago, so two years ago, and at the time uh, the, the city resolution was not uh, good as now. Okay, so uh, thanks again. I think we can close uh, here uh, the webinar. So mm -hmm. again, thank you all for attending the webinar. And again, thank you, Julia, for uh, joining us. And see you next time. Thank you. Bye bye.